Now in this video, what we'll do is we'll take input from or we'll take our value which is i and we'll assign a digit to this i. So it may be from 0 to 9. So if you assign a value 0, so we want the output as, so if I say if I try to print the value of i, so it should not be 0 in numbers, it should be 0 in words. So it will be a word 0. Okay. So if my value is 0, it should be 0. If if I type here 1, so it should print, so I need a one more state, one more printf, it should it should print 1. If the value is 2, so it, it, it should print 2 and it goes on, right? So you got the point, what we need to do here. So if my i value is 5, so it should print 5. So for this, what we can do is we can write these statements or we can write 10 statements. Time in will focus only on 4 statements because it will waste our time by writing those 10 statements. So we'll talk about from maybe from 0 to 5 or 0 to 4. So we'll count 5 numbers, we'll take 5 numbers. So let's, let's copy paste and paste. So this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. So let's take this number, if my value is 4, it will print 4, this, this word 4. But how to do that? So to print it, we need to first check. So how to check? So we have to say if, if my value is equal to equal to 0, if this is the case, I want to print 0. Else, if, if my value is equal to equal to 1, then I will print 1. I will print 1. But you will say, where is the curly brackets there? We need to mention the curly brackets, right? So we need to use this open and close brackets. The amazing thing is, in if, if you have only one statement, we don't require those curly brackets. If you have more than one statement, then we require those curly brackets. So even if you give those curly brackets here, it will work. But if you don't give it, still it will work. So why to waste our line by writing those curly brackets? Okay. Now for this, we'll again use else if and i equal to equal to 2 and then list goes on, right? So we have to write till uh, 4. So instead of that, what we can do is, now Java provides you one more feature which, which, which is called as, so instead of using if else, we can use switch. Now switch is, you know, it, it works best when you have this type of syntax, where you want to print something depend upon the value. So what we can pass in the expression, so this, this is the syntax for spring, that, uh, sorry, switch. And that's why I love Xcode, just type switch, it will give you the basic syntax. Uh, this is not possible in uh, Turbo C++ or most of the IDEs. So if you're a Mac user, you should use Xcode for C programming or maybe for learning people don't recommend this type of IDEs. But I believe you should be exposed to IDEs at the, at the start only. So that's how you create a switch case. So how to write switch case? We'll write from the start. We'll not take help of this. So we'll say switch. In switch, you have to pass the variable you want to check, and then you have to define some cases. So if your case is zero, so that means if your case is zero, we'll print this statement here. And then if your case is one, we'll print, we'll print one. And if your case is two, we'll print, and then let me remove this code just to make it simple and if your case is 3 we'll go for max 3 I to take 4 and then we'll say this is 3 okay and we'll give a printf here so if your value is if your value is 2 and if I run this it should print 2 right so let's see if I run this and I want slash n after every line so that it will show in the new line. And now if I run this, it says 2. So it's not printing 0, it's not printing 1. It's printing 2, it's also printing 3. Why it's printing 3? The thing is, whenever you use cases, after every case we need to say break so that it will break the switch and it will go to the next thing. It will not continue with the statement. So after every case we need to mention break. 
So what is break? Break is basically used to break the current statement or current block. Okay, and here also we need to mention break. Now if you mention break here and if you run this code, you will be getting only 2 not 3 because as soon as your case satisfies here, it will print 2 and it will break. So it, once you say break, it will come out of the switch statement. Clear? So that's how you use switch. But let's say if you have the value which is let's say 6. Now 6 is not a part of this uh, cases, right? And if you run this, it will not execute the switch block. So it will print nothing. Uh, but I want to print something. I want to print uh, not a valid number, something in that way. So we can use something called as default. So this is same like, uh, what do you say? Uh, else in if else, default. And we'll write printf. And we can write not a valid number. And if I run this code, it will print not a valid number. Simple. So that's how you use switch statement in C programming. So thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you will get the updates for the for, for the tutorials.